How's it going, guys? My name's Wilson. Active NBA players for 2021-22. A lot of former lottery picks fading fast, some still performing at a super high level, but others have heavily disappointed over the years. I'm not going to mention guys who's not currently in the league, although they could get signed at any time. Guys like Don Maker, Chris Dunn, and Jaleel Okafor are already out the NBA. Every one of the guys on my list giving little to no production this season, some because of the lack of playing time, has a little bit to do with politics. With that said, here are 10 former lottery picks who could be out of the NBA at any moment now. Starting with Ennis Kanter of the Boston Celtics, the most outspoken player in the league when it comes to political issues, Kanter has not been the one to shut up and dribble when it comes to possibly affecting his pockets. If there's one player willing to stand up to democracy amongst all cultures, even if he's risking his money and could be blackballed by the league, it's the 6'10 center who's been absolutely critical of LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and Nets owner Joe Tsai. We all know the NBA's worst nightmare, having somebody in the association calling out the CCP. Take a look at how quickly they wanted to dismiss Daryl Morey's tweet from a few seasons back. The 29 year old has made more appearances all season on cable news networks than games played. Career low since his rookie year, under 5-5, five five, just 10 minutes. Kanner provided a spark for Portland last season, an 11-11 guy, one of the best rebounders in the league. Anybody who's been following his career knows he's extremely vocal on human rights issues since day one, talks the talks, also walks the walk, doesn't shine away from politics. Kanner strongly believes his lack of playing time due to his political tics. China banned Celtic games from streaming in their country due to Kanter's earlier remarks. Many continue to ignore this problem. Funny how the league seems to disapprove on Kanter's remarks when profits can be lost. But when it comes to American politics and issues, players around the league can spread tons of fake news without even being educated on certain situations yet don't have to suffer any consequences. Knowing the risk of speaking out, old schoolers remember Mohamed Abdul-Raoul being blackballed by the league. The NBA likely doing everything possible to limit troubles with their partners. Can't they simply pointing out the hypocrisy, the so-called social justice woke BS. Many players complain only when their pockets aren't being affected. No players have the goals to back Canter. Having half a billion NBA fans and a $5 billion enterprise called NBA China. Don't be shocked if the former third overall pick gets released very soon and might play his final season. The only team I see giving him a contract after Boston, the Philadelphia 76ers. Jabari Parker, a total shell of himself, the 26 year old will never reach his full potential after the two ACL injuries, never living up to the player he's supposed to be. Now consider a bench player, putting up 5 and 3 for Boston, known for his ISO scoring, not a knockdown shooter or a passer, making 2.2 mil on the year. The former number 2 pick would have made close to 60 million for his career, 6 different teams in the span of 4 seasons. Even the struggling Bulls, his hometown team, Jim Boylan, didn't like him. Watch Washington, Atlanta, and Sacramento didn't find him useful. After 183 games with Milwaukee, Parker played less than 40 games for all his other teams. Not a good defender, inconsistent offensively, doesn't make up for his atrocious defense. Parker will simply need to produce and draw some attention if he wants to remain in the league. Ben McElmore, limited action with Portland, the former 7th pick of the 2013 class, almost out the league after averages of 3.9 points with Sacramento in 2019, before Houston gave him a chance, excel player with Hardy and Westbrook, averaged 10 a game on 40% shooting from deep, but after Harden's departure, the 6-3-2 guard was supposed to provide a spark for the defending champion Lakers off the bench, but after 21 games averaged 8 points, LA didn't resign him, took his talents to Portland on the minimum. If he can't shoot the 3 ball well, many teams will simply ignore giving him another opportunity. Willie Cauley-Stein, the 7 footer wall of the most forgotten 6 picks in recent times, now 28 with the Mavs falling out the rotation, putting up 2-2 two two with the return of Dwight Powell and decent production from Boban as a backup, Cauley-Stein's 1 year deal worth 4.1 mil at times seems disengaged, put up decent numbers with Sacramento, even averaged 13-7 and seven in year 3, at this stage appears to be more focused in his art career, a big passion of his given his lack of production on the court, his playing days could be coming to an end. Justice Winslow of the Los Angeles Clippers, the former one and done Dookie, the 10th pick of the 2015 draft after winning the national title, compared to the likes of James Harden and Wilson Chandler, an uneventful time with the Clippers averaging 2 points, 
Miami gave up on him with the Iguodala trade two seasons ago, was supposed to be one of the Heat's pieces, but can't stay healthy, played just 37 combined games each of the last two seasons, the 25 year old can't consistently get a rhythm going, being out too often, despite being in a solid situation with D Wade, showed upside with the defense, the injury histories with the wrists, shoulders and knee, never caught a break, signed for 3 years 39 with the Heat in 2018, a player once drawing some comparisons to Kawhi Leonard, one of the reasons the Clippers gave Winslow a chance due to Leonard being out, but if he can't improve and produce being on the same team with Paul George and Kawhi, Winslow's NBA days could be coming to an end. Torian Prince, who will always be known for his classic press conference with Baylor, the 27 year old, a mess after the Hawks let him go, not a good shooter, the one thing the Nets did well from the James Harden trade was getting rid of Prince and his bricks. Now with the Timberwolves, a support team, averaging less than 4 points in limited minutes, the final year of his 2 year extension Brooklyn somehow gave him, making 15 million on the year when he's in the slum, it gets real bad, arguably the worst player in the league making over 15 mil. Once with potential as a 3 and D guy. The reality is, Prince simply not an NBA level type player. Despite putting up double digits on a bad rebuilding Hawks team, the 27 year old should be in the prime of his career. Minnesota absolutely got the worst of the deal, giving away the better Ricky Rubio for somebody even if he stays in the league after this season, shouldn't be getting more than the minimum. Denzel Valentine, year 5, the former Michigan State standout pick 14 in 2016, after 4 seasons with the Bulls, barely playing much for the Cavs, hasn't been efficient, an up and down career, his worst moment as a pro, had the announcers losing their absolute minds. No. Oh my goodness, Valentine, no. Whoa, oh no. no, no, that is not the shot no. at that moment. Simply has an effect on how GMs might or might not sign certain players. Valentine does have some good qualities, but either a hit or miss, there's possessions where everybody knows he'll absolutely shoot it, predictable, mixed boneheaded plays at times, the 28 year old on a 1.8 million dollar deal needs an outburst when given the opportunity this season to make noise. Dennis Smith Jr, whose career has gone downhill since getting traded from the Mavs deep in the bench with the Blazers out of college, looked upon as the next Russell Westbrook, insane athleticism and the bounce, hasn't developed a consistent jumper, defensive liabilities always an issue, in the discussion as a top tier point guard in the draft with Lonzo Ball, Markel Fultz and the Aaron Fox, Smith going top 5 wouldn't have been surprised but dropped all the way to 9th, consider a steal for Dallas, average over 15 as a rookie, but not an elite passer, inconsistent running the point, did whatever he wanted, a terrible free throw shooter, 64% for his career, his hype train derailed when Dallas landed sensational Luka Doncic, who was handed the keys to the offense, Doncic and Smith Jr. didn't fit, of course Dallas was gonna go with the better Doncic going forward, Smith's worst moment, perhaps when the Mavs didn't design a play for Luka in a close game, Game. Smith hesitated far too long, didn't get a shot off, Luka I raped, Smith Jr. traded a month after to the Knicks, struggled even more, even received boos. Being in the Big Apple, fans impatient, chanting this. And the chant of We Want Frank is starting here at the Garden. That's, that's tough. Shot just 38% from the field with New York. Traded for Derrick Rose, a game changer for the Knicks. Smith Jr. lasted 20 games with Detroit, a tanking team, now 24 years old. Many believe he was supposed to be what John Moran is right now, but looking like he'll be on his way overseas after 2022. Kevin Knox, a very high chance he'll be out of the league. An awful way to start year 4. Outside of Knicks fans, many probably didn't know Knox still in the NBA, despite putting up almost 13 a game on 37% shooting as a rookie. The team was awful, empty stats, not even an afterthought in the Knicks rotation with the team's culture improving. Raw and inexperienced, the former number 9 pick drafted ahead of the likes of Mikhail Bridges, SGA, Miles Bridges, and MPJ. Nick fans became impatient after his rookie season, struggled in all aspects, one of the worst defender if not the worst defender in the league, lacks effort. The team rather played 30 year old Marcus Morris instead of the young Knox. While Julius Randle, RG Barrett, and Mitchell Robinson looked promising, Knox's position became uncertain due to his struggles. With more young players waiting for their chance, combining with coaching changes, Tibbs absolutely not fond of Knox. Team found success with him on the bench after Emmanuel quickly provided a spark. Knox deeper on the bench, not getting anything going. Still 22 years old, I won't be shocked to see the Knicks include him in the trade package 
only to get released after. Marvin Bagley the third. Nothing but distractions and bad news in Sacramento. Known as the player drafted ahead of Luka. Something that could haunt the Kings franchise for decades. The former number two pick neither can stay healthy. His pops always angry on social media. Demanding Marvin be traded. Lacks defense. The team looked better without him for the most part. Stuck mostly on the bench all season, perhaps new head coach Alvin Gentry will use him properly if he could get along better than the previous coaches, making over 11 mil on the year, an organization with no structure, awful for many seasons, once seen as a potential number one pick and the best player out of high school, seen as a superstar with Chris Bosch like potential. If the 2018 class was to be redrafted, Bagley likely wouldn't even go top 10 by now given his lack of body of work, the defense not good, identical number of 14 and 7 each of his first three seasons teams weren't interested enough getting him three seasons with the kings when healthy 47 and 66 record with him without him 45 and 44 overall shockingly winning record despite having more potential than all the players on this list if Bagley's put in a better situation might be a solid rotation guy but having no growth in an awful franchise simply doesn't do him any favors outside of kevin knox the kings could have blindly selected anybody between DeAndre Ayton to Miles Bridges and every one of those players would have made more impact with Sacramento than Bagley. After apparently refusing to check in the game, showing anger directed at former coach Luke Walton, attitudes like this will be brought up by the GMs when discussing to trade for players, not a good sign. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know who you guys think on this list will still remain on an NBA roster for the next couple of seasons. I love to get to know your thoughts. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and everything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, hit the subscribe button. I love all of you. More good stuff coming soon. See you next time.